So I'm, I'm Greg Stock. I'm the CEO of Ecoios. And what we're trying to do is something uh, quite interesting. Where is this going for? What am I doing wrong? There. Oops, there we go. Uh, in, in that there's a big problem in that there are a lot of uh, environmental toxins that are around that uh, there are at least small subpopulations that are very uh, sensitive to them. And uh, people don't know who they are when they're in that group. That those who are vulnerable don't know. And a lot of women, of course, are concerned about exposing a developing fetus or their children to uh, toxins that might cause a problem. Mercury is one of these that is uh, particularly such. And there's a very easy solution to that, if you could do it, is just look at people and look at their genetics or other factors as well and see who's particularly vulnerable and then tell them. And so that they are empowered with information that they can avoid or do things that they wouldn't normally do in order to avoid exposure or to minimize it. And our first um, test is basically a mail-in saliva test to look at susceptibility to mercury. And this is really significant because it turns out that there are about one in seven boys, boys are a little bit more vulnerable than girls, who are at very high risk. You can identify them, and this is serious. If you have a mouthful of amalgam fillings, uh, that's a three-year delay in the development of things like uh, visual processing speed or other neurodevelopment tr developmental traits. So that's 17-year-olds that are functioning at a 14-year-old level. And nobody has thought of those as being dangerous things, amalgam fillings. So uh, this is the test kit. Uh, David showed this, who's uh, a co-founder of this company. Um, and mercury, for people who aren't familiar with it, it gets into the environment generally through burning coal, volcanoes as well, but it's a trace element, and it goes into the atmosphere, comes down in the soil, and then gets into the food chain, where it's bioconcentrated, gets into a large uh, fish like tuna, uh, and also there are amalgam fillings, which are 50% mercury. There are two mi 20 million of those that are put in people's mouths every year and a lot of other different exposure uh, method, uh, vectors that you can use as well. Um, it's, a un it's a global problem, and as you can see, the soil burden is very high in areas where there's a lot of coal burning that's occurring. Um, and it turns out that a lot of people would actually like to know this sort of stuff. If you ask people if they uh, would be interested in taking that test, and you focus on a specific population of about 15 million women who are already concerned about environmental health issues, uh, then 60% uh, of them say they would want to take this test as a, and pay money for it as well. And uh, two-thirds say they would give it to their whole families. So there's a, this is a mass market product, and there aren't very many that you can think of in the envirogenomics realm at this point. Uh, we have, the science has to be very good, and we were able to uh, piggyback off of an NIH study because mercury is such a well-known toxin that they put in fi nearly $15 million to fund a seven-year study in Portugal, and we got IP on that and have licensed it from the University of Washington. And this was on 500 kids for seven years. They looked at 120 variables, nerve conduction speed, neural behavioral endpoints, the kind of really deep study that would be required to look at these sorts of things. And we've looked at 10 loci at this point, things that are associated with bio, uh, biological pathways that would likely be associated with mercury toxicity. And five of the SNPs that we've looked at show significant effects. And just to give you, this is, I think, about the first example of something where there's really a solid effect that's a germ environment, uh, a gene environment effect. And you can see that there are, I can't put down the actual SNP names at this point because we're in the middle of filing IP. But that's highly significant results here. We're talking in some situations of a P less than 0 0.0001. So these are very clear, gender specific, uh, multiple genes that are involved. And we've been very, very careful in terms of looking at this data. That for each variable, you've, we've looked to see that things are normalized. We've transformed variables where necessary, look for age relationships, IQ. So it's very solid data, very well developed, and very well analyzed data. And it, when you're looking at lots of endpoints, you get a possibility of false positives. You can do something called a quantile-quantile analysis to see whether the p-values are actually much lower than would be expected from random sort of events. And you can see that within the boys, you're getting substantial deviations. So there is signal here. And in girls, there's a smaller signal uh, in some narrow domains. And I'm just giving uh, an indication 
uh, here, where if it were random, then you'd have positive or negative effects, whereas these genes would be predicted to actually uh, potentiate deleterious effects from mercury, uh, make the same effects occur at, at lower concentrations or to a greater extent. And in fact, the red ones there are ones that are in the negative direction, as we would expect. And virtually all the uh, interventions with the uh, tests that have shown statistical significance with these particular genes are in the, the right direction there. And you get um, all sorts of, of tests on working memory and such. And again, if you look at ones that are highly statistically significant, that's less than 0.005 results, you get significant effects. And the z-score is one that shows how much you're moving it, and you're moving a, a standard deviation or more. So these are very, very real effects. They're, ca they're caused by the environment, their potentiation. We have a very strong uh, scientific advisory board that's been working with us on this. George uh, Church, of course, has uh, been helpful here. And this is the first of a whole series of environmental tests that we're going to be looking at for a variety of environmental toxins. And it, it's important because most of the effects to date that have been looked at are things that are deal with a narrow subset of people who are really ill. This is for the general population, for people who would like to uh, avoid uh, problems and things that are actionable. You can actually change your exposure level, your consumption of fish, your use of amalgam uh, fillings, these sorts of things. So that's what we're doing. Thank you.